All right, it's time to review the most powerful plugin for OBS. It is NDI. In fact, I wrote an entire book called The Unofficial Guide to NDI. So there's a lot to learn about NDI, but in the Super User Guidebook, we're gonna learn how to install NDI into OBS, using it, all the features inside of OBS. And then if you wanna learn how NDI can change your entire video production workflow by leveraging your local area network, networking, and even the wide area network connecting studios around the world, that's gonna take some time. But luckily, for free, you can download the unofficial guide to NDI to learn more about it. But let's take a look at NDI specifically inside of OBS. Really quickly, just wanna remind everybody that you can get a free copy of the OBS Super User Guidebook in the link below. You can get a free copy uh, in the link below, which is PDF, or you can get a, a paperback copy on Amazon. But by the way, guys, only about 10% of our viewers actually subscribe to our channel. So really quickly, wanted to ask you to hit the red subscribe button if you want us to make more videos about this topic. If we're doing something wrong, let us know in the comments below, or if you have any questions about the content, I'd be happy to reply to in the comments below. All right, let's get going. So I wanna give you guys a really simple example of using NDI with OBS. I have the NDI camera app on my phone. It's $10, and I think there's some even some free ones out there. This is the one from directly from NDI, and it shows video, right? It's on my Wi-Fi, the same network connected to this computer. And when I add an NDI source, my iPhone shows up and boom, just give it a second. I'm getting live video from my smartphone. And look at the latency is very low directly into OBS. So wireless camera, that's one way to use it. Another really cool app that you might wanna check out. There's one called NDI Capture. And what that app does is it captures whatever's happening on your smartphone and sends it back to OBS. So this one's a little different, but again, both of them are really powerful. And I wanna show you something else that, about our network here for NDI. Okay, now I know this looks like a mess. This is our network switch. This is a gigabit network switch. It has 48 ports, it's from Unify. And every single camera and computer on our network is connected here. So just to give you an idea, these network cables obviously are connected to Wi-Fi access points. Let's go up here. So this is a Wi-Fi access point. That's how my smartphone connects to this computer here, which is running our OBS. And of course, this ethernet cable right here is connecting it back to our local area network. Just to give you some context on how this works, we have other cameras, for example. They're also connected to the ethernet. These cameras specifically require, uh, get PoE, power over ethernet. So just to give you an idea kind of how some of this stuff works inside of our studio. All right, so NDI is literally one of the most popular plugins for OBS for a variety of reasons. When we go ahead and go to download, it's going to take us to GitHub because this is a plugin that's constantly being updated. If you follow it, you'll notice there's new integrations. It's available for OBS, it's available for Mac, and it's available for Linux. There's a really easy installer for Windows, and you also will be prompted to install the NDI runtime environment. The latest NDI runtime uh, will be need to be installed in order to use NDI. So over in OBS, there are at least three simple ways to use NDI with OBS. The, the most simple starting point is to go to Tools and go to NDI Output Settings, and you have two options here. You can have a main NDI output and a preview NDI output. And essentially, what this means is all of the video that's in your main output or your preview output can be sent over your local area network and received by another computer or NDI enabled device. So that means you could potentially have another computer on your local area network connected to a TV for displaying your live stream, or you could have it connected to another OBS computer, which is a dedicated computer for connecting to a Zoom webinar, 
or recording your feed for you to take the processing load off your computer. There's so many ways to use NDI. It's really worth reading up on it and learning more. But this is the NDI output area. Generally, I think most people just use the main output of NDI with this and you can name it. So you can do, you know, OBS production and that name will be what shows up on the receiving computers. There's NDI decoders, for example, connect to your local area network and then output SDI or NDI for traditional workflows. And that is what will show up. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. Those are your main outputs. Now you also have the ability to bring in NDI inputs. So these are sources inside of your scene. So you can bring NDI video over your local area network very easily using an NDI source. Now I've already got a bunch of different NDI sources in here. So what I'm going to do is double click one that's already connected. And what you'll see here is all of the NDI sources on my local area network are discoverable. That's one of the really nice things about NDI is it makes discoverability of IP video sources easy. You don't need to know IP addresses. You don't need to be doing any technical work. It just gives you the friendly name of the camera or source you're trying to connect to. You choose it and then you can select the bandwidth. Now you should, we should really note a little bit about bandwidth here. Um, there's two options here or three options really. There's the highest bandwidth, the lowest bandwidth and audio only. Now there's two main modes of NDI at this point in general. There's NDI HB, which is NDI high bandwidth. And then there's NDI HX, which is NDI high efficiency. High bandwidth uses more bandwidth, generally between 100 and 200 megabits per second, which is a lot of bandwidth on a local area network. Most networks can handle about a gigabit, which is 1000 megabits of data. There are networks that can support more, but most people are working on gigabit networks today. And essentially you can only connect to as many sources as you are capable of bandwidth for your network interface card on your computer. And I want to show this quickly in performance. This is in task manager. Mac users have activity monitor. It's similar. There's an ethernet tab here. And what this ethernet is showing is your network interface card, which is the ethernet cable connected into your computer. And you can see here right now I'm sending 130 megabits per second and I'm receiving about 20 megabits per second. And that is because currently I am using one of the NDI tools. When you start using NDI with OBS, you have access to all the great NDI tools. And we'll take a look at those in a moment. The one that I'm using now is called screen capture. And I'm capturing my entire screen, sending it to a separate computer for recording. And that's why I'm sending about 130 megabits per second of data. I'm receiving about only 20 megabits of data. And that is because I'm bringing in two NDI HX, two NDI HX high efficiency cameras. NDI HX cameras are in the neighborhood of 10 to 30 megabits per second. So they're much more efficient, a little higher compression, but honestly with HX, I talked to a lot of people about this. Most people can't even tell the difference and the savings on bandwidth is really beneficial for everybody using it. So that's what the difference between the highest and the lowest bandwidth. If we change it to lowest, there's going to be a noticeable difference in the quality. So I'm going to keep it at highest, to be honest. And then there is something called source timing. If you've properly set up your NDI devices, and this is more technical than we need to go into on this video, but every NDI device has a synchronization option. And if your network has set up to synchronize all of the IP video together, you should use the exact same network time protocol server, more advanced than we need to, but it is outlined in the OBS super user guidebook to keep all of your IP video sources in sync. And the latency is very low, it's, it's great. You can allow hardware acceleration, which allows uh, even increased acceleration of the processing. And then you can see here, there's a little link to NDI.tv, which I'd like to show you quickly because these are totally free IP video production tools that you can use to get started with IP video one really popular one is the NDI webcam input. So you could take the output of your OBS production to another computer running Zoom or vMix or any software that runs a webcam. 
NDI Bridge is an amazing one. In this video, we don't have enough time to go over all of these, but they're really great tools for IP video and video production. You can add an NDI source. Now, here is the final one that a lot of people don't think about, but going back to this scene here, for example, we can add a filter to a scene or a source to create a dedicated NDI output. Okay, so we can have as many NDI outputs from OBS as we want. It's kind of like source record in the sense that we can have as many sources we want to record. We can have as many outputs as we'd want, whether they're scenes or sources. We add the dedicated NDI output filter, give it a name. Let's call this, you know, scene four. So we can, so on the receiving end of this NDI IP video output, we know what we're grabbing and that's what makes NDI so easy because it's discoverable and it makes it easy to pull those video sources in. So that has created a dedicated NDI output just like that. So to summarize, you have your main NDI outputs. You can bring NDI inputs in and you can add filters to any scene or source to create unique dedicated NDI outputs from your OBS production. NDI is an IP video production protocol, right? It's a standard in the industry where you can connect a video over your local area network instead of using HDMI cables and capture cards. Read about it, learn about it. It's totally worth your time. It is one of the best, most powerful plugins for OBS. So yeah, NDI is pretty incredible. It's now been out for about seven years. I remember when it was originally released at the International Broadcast Convention in Amsterdam in 2015. It's really changed the landscape, allowing people to do so much more with less. Capture cards, PCIe Express cards, cabling that isn't network connected is starting to become obsolete. It's happening faster and faster every year. So you should really learn about NDI and how you can leverage it, which is why you should really pick up a gu the guidebook, watch uh, some of our videos in the online course and learn more about NDI because it will further what you can do with video production. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.